Ah, the humble self-imposed challenge. Such a simple concept, and one that can be applied to any game. Take something in the game, and flip it on its head. There's a game where you can collect all the creatures you want. Freak you! Now you can only use one per route, and if it dies, it's gone forever. There's a game where you have to jump. Too easy. We don't jump here. There's a game where you have to fight enemies to get stronger. I live on the side of weakness and survive to tell the tale. Challenges come in all shapes and sizes. And today, we're diving into the world of Mario to finally conquer one of the oldest challenges and one of my childhood favorites. This is the culmination of people's skill and knowledge to answer a simple question. What's the minimum number of coins required to not just beat, but complete Super Mario 3D Land? Now, of course, for any challenge, there needs to be rules. Basically, anything is allowed. Glitches, P-Wings, exploits, tasks, whatever. As long as I don't hack or change the vanilla game fundamentally, it's allowed. The only rule is that we can't collect coins. Any coins on the ground, by killing enemies, the timer coins, the flagpole coins. If it increases the coin counter, it's a coin and therefore not allowed. Star medals don't increase the coin count when collected for the first time, so they don't count. However, collecting them for a second time does count because it gives you coins. But to be honest, it's not like that rule is going to really come into consideration. I just thought I would mention it. The goal is to complete everything in the game. We're not skipping anything here. That means we're getting all the star medals, all gold flag pulls, and beating every level as both Mario and Luigi to unlock the final level and complete the game. With that out of the way, let's -a go! Well, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that'd be great. Now enjoy the video. Now, I could go through every level and explain the routes used, but honestly, people have already done that. And I kind of want to focus on the more challenging parts. Mainly because most of these are kind of easy to beat without collecting any coins. There are a few common ways that coins can be inadvertently collected, so I'll cover those before we move on to any specific levels. Firstly, enemies are not friends. Whenever you jump on them or swipe at them with your tanuki tail or kill them while invincible, you get coins. Which means, whenever possible, do not engage with any enemies. If you do, make sure to kill them with projectiles such as fireballs from the fire flower. While I do like the boomerang and boomerang mario, boomerangs can also collect coins, so they're basically extended hitboxes. Secondly, be wary of power-ups or blocks. Blocks are self-explanatory, they could have coins. Power-ups, on the other hand, can make you a bit wary. They can sometimes give you 10 coins in very specific circumstances, so just be careful. Once you have your tanuki suit and fire flower, you're pretty much set for the rest of the game. And finally, the end is the make or break moment of every level. The flagpole is very scary. For one, you should only grab the top of the flagpole. The top gives you a one-up, and if you grab anywhere else, you get coins. Another thing, you should try and get rid of any enemies near the flagpole, as they will immediately kill them and grant you their coins. Finally, the worst part, the timer. The timer is honestly the most annoying part. When you grab the flagpole, the timer will stop and then grant you coins based on how much time is left. Put simply, for every 10 seconds left on the timer, you get one coin. So, you have to grab the flagpole at 9 seconds or below, or you, else you'll get coins because of the timer. And that's pretty much it. Almost every level is very doable with nothing really to, of note to mention. So let's get into the actual challenges. Let's get into some of the issues that were overcome in both C's videos and Nico's videos. Firstly, cannons were kind of problematic, as coin rings were used to guide the player's shots. Luckily, in all cases, you can just shoot slightly to the left or above them to get the desired outcome. Underwater coin rings are easily avoidable by crouching. These coins above the bounce pad were easily cheesable by wall jumping with a tanuki suit flutter. The thing is, in this challenge, the tanuki suit, the flutter ability, and how it combines with wall jumping is invaluable mobility. Without these, the challenge would be way harder. Also, a rule of thumb, try not to go in the middle. These level designers really like putting the coins in the middle of pathways. These infinite porky puffers can be killed with fireballs before jumping to the flag. Murder is completely okie dokie, as long as you don't get rich from it by using projectiles, like in this fire flower bitty butt jump from world 5-5. But with all that out of the way, I don't need to go over every level in detail, like Ooh, look, a somewhat hard jump I had to do to skip coins with the Tanuki suit. We're just gonna go th over the levels that need to be looked at and look at the real challenges we need to overcome. Let's warm up with a simple one, Special 2-2's Coin. It's a pretty basic remix level, now with a stricter timer, which is honestly a good thing because we don't have to wait as long to at the flagpole. However, at the flagpole, Nico had a problem. Coins seemingly appeared out of nowhere when he grabbed the top. Where did they come from, you ask? It's simple, the dandelions. Dandelions are interesting in Super Mario 3D Land. 
seemingly added to take advantage of the microphone on the Nintendo 3DS that can sometimes give you items or coins. When you grab the flagpole, the dandelions puff away and give you its contents, which in this case are coins. That's not good. How do we get around it? Well, it's simple. If we can get the dandelions off screen, then we can grab the flagpole with ease. And that's where this forgotten feature that literally has no purpose in the game comes in clutch to save the day. Yes, panning the camera left or right. When you press left or right on the D-pad, the camera rotates to the left or right. This feature is pretty much useless as there is no singular point in a playthrough where people actually use this thing. But finally, this feature has one use and one specific challenge in one specific level. Now we just need to hold this thing down with something. Hold on a minute. Okay, okay, I'm back. I got some tape. Now we just tape down the D-pad and BOOM! Mario 3D Land's unofficial accessory to help us play Mario the way Nintendo intended. We jump from the pipe with our Tanuki suit flutter down to the flagpole and BOOM! No coins. Easy money. Wait, I mean no money! No mo- That was a bit of a lengthy explanation for one level, so here's a quick one. The third star coin in Special 6-5 normally requires you to hit these invisible blocks to collect it. Simple enough, but oh no, these blocks have coins in them, so how do we get around it? Well, in this level, we have to ride around on these broken floor platforms, and this spooky ride ends with a fast fall to the door. However, you don't have to stay on the platform. You can jump off, Tanuki flutter to the corner of this wall, and fall right into the cubby with a third star medal. An easy and out-of-the-box way of thinking. Speaking of out-of-the-box thinking, Special 6-Airship. You know, it's interesting. This is only one of two times in the game that a coin in the actual field can impede progress in the level. I will say the special 6- airship is a very cool level. It begins with a starting section with platforms, then you have to get to this part. If you don't have a tanuki suit, you can go down this pipe and fight Boom Boom. If you do have a tanuki suit, you can tail swipe these blocks and skip the Boom Boom fight entirely. The problem is, both of these paths suck. The pipe is blocked by a coin, and the block pathway is blocked by, you guessed it, a coin. So no matter which way we decide to go, we get a coin. The illusion of free choice. Well, call me the math magician because I'm revealing this illusion for the cheap party trick it is. This is a 3D game, so we can just go around it. Equip a tanuki suit, jump toward the camera, and wall jump around the barricade, fluttering as you do so. With a little skill, you can make it to the other side, skipping both coins and the star medal. Wait, <laughs> the star medal, we need that! But we can't go into this cubby here, then we're stuck, and it's not like we can spend time figuring this out. This is an auto stroller, and we can't take our time, we'll be dead! <laughs> well, it's time I reveal the truth. I know I wrote this like it's off the cuff and all, but the truth is, this stuff takes planning. And I've known about this dilemma for a while. I'm not dumb. My file was specifically set up to do this trick. It's time to reveal my true intentions. My true intention is this. You notice how World 1 still has a red marker on it? Did I cheat? Did I hack? No, I simply used the game's mechanics in unintended ways. You see, World 1-2 isn't completed because of this oversight. World 1-2 is one of two levels in Super Mario 3D Land where there is a secret warp. I may not have been working on the drain as swimming isn't my game, but this is the only way to leave a level without beating it. Why is that important? Well, remember in the rules where I said anything possible in the vanilla game is allowed? Well, that includes the cheat items, like the invincibility leaf, and more importantly, the P-Wing. The P-Wing is super cool and useful as it allows you to skip to the end of the levels whenever you want when you die 10 times in a stage. The only problem is you can't use them everywhere as you can only get them in non-special world levels. Also importantly, you can't get them in levels you've already beaten. You see where I'm going with this, right? Whenever I leave through the secret exit with a P-Wing, the level isn't beaten and I still have my P-Wing. This is called P-Wing smuggling and it allows you to get infinite P-Wings just by playing World 1-2. So now, all I have to do is smuggle a P-Wing, go to the Special 6 airship, jump in the cubby, grab the star medal, P-Wing to the end, wait for the timer, grab the top of the flight pole, re-enter the Special 6 airship fourth wall jump, 
and collect the other two star medals, wait at the end, grab the top again, and hooray! Special Six Dash Airship is defeated! Well, isn't this nice? No coins collected yet, eh? By now you may be wondering, I started this video with the question, what's the minimum number of coins required to complete Super Mario 3D Land, and not something like, can you complete Super Mario 3D Land without touching a coin? These two questions are seem very similar, but the implication is that the latter question is no. Why is it then that this challenge seemed trivial so far? Two words. Cosmic Clone. This little sh** follows you around, copying your every movement, lagging about a second or two behind you. But why the animosity? It seems more annoying than anything. Well... Yes. In death, this little ah! wipe gives you three coins no matter what. Well, that's not too bad. Oh yeah? Remember we have to visit every level twice? Once as Mario, once as Luigi? Do the math! For every time we enter a Cosmic Clone level, that's a three coin penalty. And since we do it twice, that's six coins! Well, that's fine. I can There's only a few Cosmic Clone levels in the le Seven! Seven Cosmic Clone levels! That's 42 coins. That's a lot, but it can't get much worse than Special 7-4. This level, this godforsaken level is different. It's not just a Cosmic Clone level. So far, we've been only talking about the small Cosmic Clones. This distinction implies something, and that something is the worst. Big Cosmic Clones. They only appear in a few levels, but only one makes you finish a level with it on your a <laughs> This chunker gives you 10 coins when defeated by a flagpole. That means Special 7-4 is the most expensive to complete at a 20 coin penalty. That's 6 levels needing to give you 6 coins to complete it, and another 1 giving you 20 coins to complete it. That's 56 coins with Cosmic Clones. Why the hell do these f <laughs> give us these stinky, disgusting coins, and unavoidable ones at that? <sighs> well, you probably didn't know this. But I'm no slouch when it comes to Super Mario 3D Land. My lore, my channel lore, goes back far. And in 2019, I discovered a glitch. And then he would just roll right onto the pole the first chance he got. See? Two coins! And that's kind of cool. Like... Oh my gosh, I shaved off one more coin off the counter. I'm sure there's some kind of optimal way. Yes, this is the first documented footage of what I dubbed the Cosmic Clone Flagpole Glitch. You see, the Cosmic Clone dies when the flagpole is touched, so why not touch the flagpole before the Cosmic Clone even exists? Something that doesn't exist can't die, or something like that. Either way, by using the previously mentioned P-Wing smuggling trick, we can smuggle a P-Wing into a Cosmic Clone level, then wait for the appropriate time on the timer. Deploy the P-Wing and fast travel all the way to the flagpole. Once you're here, you only got a half second to react and grab onto the flagpole. Jumping takes too long, so you have to long jump. Sure, you get coins by not touching the top, but if it's less than three, it's an improvement. I may have found the glitch, but I had to give credit to Uwumi from the Super Mario 3D Land Tasting Discord server for proving that getting one coin on the flagpole is possible. With our collaboration, we reduced the amount from 56 from Cosmic Clone levels to 35. Sadly, I believe this is the lowest we can go with current knowledge, since we have to grab the flagpole twice, once for Mario and Luigi, and we have to touch the top to get the gold flag, we inevitably have to collect the Cosmic Clone's death coins once. Since there's such a small window of time to grab the flagpole, and we start at the bottom, unless there's a way to get a ton of height in about half a second, we can't reduce the amount of coins from these seven levels. So the lowest is 35 coins, right? Well, kinda? It's the lowest theoretical number, but there's a 36 coin. Welcome to World 5-2, the worst level in this game. Now, this level was skipped using a P-Wing, but we can't do that here because of the star battles. The third one can be gotten pretty easily by backtracking, but the first, and especially second, are spawns of Coin Satan. The first star medal is in the circular room, with three rooms going to the north, west, and east. Now, thanks to the work of Steve Gaming and his wonderful audience, we have proof of the west gate being successfully breached by a mysterious YouTuber by the name of Nathaniel Strub. 
Apparently, he was able to do that by being Small Mario standing on the bottom of the northmost raised platform, performing a rolling long jump 10 degrees down from straight white and holding upright while jumping to preserve momentum. Okay. While there's no actual video evidence of this trick, it ultimately doesn't matter. By using a P-Wing, backtracking back to this checkpoint and performing a long jump over this coin with thanks to this very forgiving ceiling, we can make it to this room and collect the first star medal. However, once we are in this room, we can't make it through the east hallway without collecting a coin. Why? The ceiling is too low. I try getting by by rolling, not rolling long jumps mind you, but every time I either missed the entryway or I bonked poor Mario's head. There just isn't a way to not collect a coin here. Now you may be thinking I'm gonna turn off the sad music and come back storming in with some super high energy music and and that HAHA YOU THOUGHT I'M GOLDEN AND I BAMBOOZLED YOU YET AGAIN stick. But no, sometimes we just can't do it. This coin is unavoidable. At least I think. There may be a way to break this game and clip out of bounds or something, I came to that. Plus, we had to break it both ways since we likely can't get both a P-Wing and a Fire Flower into that room. But until this room is breakable, this is coin number 36. World 5-2 is the worst level in Super Mario 3D Land in terms of the coinless challenge. The other levels, like the Cosmic Clone levels, had coins that were unavoidable. You literally couldn't leave the level without collecting the coins from the clones. But this one coin cannot be avoided at all in an actual level. This is the final coin that has any potential to be avoided. And that is the state of Super Mario 3D Land coinless. Going for completion required this challenge to become a minimum coins run, and a theoretical lowest of 35 is literally one coin away. Will that coin be avoided? Will the second star medal be routed? And who, if anyone, would be the one to skip this coin, go down in Mario history, and put this challenge to rest? Maybe that day will never come. But the key word there is not never, it's maybe. Maybe.